cheaper, healthier. Somebody new uh, to cooking, they may not be used to recipes. You know, they may just have seen their mom throwing stuff in the pots and stuff. And you know, how do you read a recipe? How, how, what do you, what's it like? Yeah, I agree. The first couple of times you try to cook something, it's probably good to go with a recipe. For instance, take meat. I mean, how long do you cook meat? Well, I, you know, I suppose, but maybe you know, done this tests and things like that. But uh, if you want something more than just meat on a plate, then you want to have some kind of recipe to start with. Uh, recipes are easy to find. You can find them in cookbooks on the internet. You can find them in the grocery stores. You can. You have pretty much endless supply. One, re one way to get good recipes is if you have some friends and they invite you over for dinner and there's something you like, ask the cook for the recipe and then make it yourself. The good thing about recipes is they're just a starting point. If you make a recipe and find you don't like a particular ingredient, substitute an ingredient. If you like your meat done less well or more well than the recipe indicated, then increase the time a little bit. But the recipe is a good place to start. Well, having friends over is not uncommon. You know? No, especially friends of the opposite gender. You may want to impress them with your culinary skills. And a recipe is a good place to practice a meal a couple of times and then uh, make it your own. And one of the nice things about a recipe, or one of the reasons for looking at a recipe, is it, lets, it reminds you of what you've done so that you can make it exactly the same way. That's true, and uh, the recipes are easy to deal with. I mean, normally they're going to be on some kind of printed paper. Uh, you can find them on the internet. Um, you're probably going to want to print them out because if you want to make changes, it's a lot easier to line out the things you don't want and write the substitute in. Or if you're only making for one, most of the recipes call for enough for two, four servings, six servings. You want to scale that down a bit to your own personal needs. The nice thing about recipes is that you can substitute ingredients. If a recipe calls for vinegar, for instance, and you don't like the taste that the vinegar imparted to the recipe. Or you don't have vinegar. Or you don't have vinegar, try lemon juice instead especially if uh, you buy a fresh lemon and squeeze it yourself. Unless you like everything very, very sweet, you can usually dispense with a lot of the, sh the added sugar that they tell you to put in in a recipe. Now, that's one of the things when I was growing up, my, there was a standard recipe that called for know, a cup of sugar. My mom never used more than a third of a cup. You know, we ate sugar, but not much. Yeah, and that reminds me, when you read a recipe, there are going to be various kinds of measurements. So uh, when you see something that says one C, that usually means one cup. One half C obviously is a half a cup. Um, a capital T will be a tablespoon and a small T will be a teaspoon. Sometimes the recipes will call for certain ounces, particularly of liquid items. So it's important to know that eight ounces equals one cup of liquid and two cups of liquid equals one pint four cups of liquid therefore equals one quart. When a recipe is in terms of weight, you know, when you have a recipe that's not in cups and teaspoons and stuff, it might be in terms of ounces, and especially ones that are from outside the U.S. You know, most, most other countries don't use cups and ounces, um, or cups and teaspoons. Um, they don't use ounces either, they use metric. But if you have a scale, that's a, that's a really helpful thing. And that also makes it easier to get the proportions. You know, and when you, if you are downsizing or upsizing a recipe, you, can, you don't have to figure out, okay, there are how many teaspoons in a cup and you know, all that. You just multiply or divide. You can make a lot or you can make a little. So it's important to be able to know how to downsize the recipes. If you're cooking for one or if you just want to try the recipe and you're not really sure about it, uh, scale it down a bit so you make one portion or two. One of the other, you know, we talked about the conventions of the abbreviations in recipes, but also there's some conventional order. Yes, and this is something you have to be careful of in 
recipes that are unfamiliar, you want to take a look at the ingredients list so that you know what to buy at the store. But before you start making it, read the entire recipe, in particular the cooking instructions. If it's something where you have to let something sit and marinate for a half hour, you don't want to start preheating the oven um, while that marinade is going on. That's just a waste of energy and a waste of money. And in summertime, it'll make your kitchen a lot warmer too. Another thing about reading it ahead of time is you can find out if, uh, if you need some kind of a pan that you don't have right on hand. Don't try and do that recipe. As you're making a recipe, if you do change ingredients, be sure to write down what you changed. Don't write it on the recipe yet until you know whether or not you like it. But after you have the meal, if you like it, make sure it gets on the recipe so you don't forget it. And then the next time, you won't have to think about it. Yeah, if you're making up a new dish, you know, and you're not going to know quite what the proportions are, kind of keep track in your head so that you can write them down so that you can repeat that the next time. That's one of the purposes of a recipe, repeatability. Uh, it's also helpful to put the, the little star on there to know when a recipe is good. It's like, we like this one, we'll make it again. They still do make file cards. So if you find a recipe that's handwritten and somebody lets you copy it down and you don't want to store it as a piece of paper, file cards still exist. And they're sturdier than a piece they of paper. They are sturdier. 